All right, this is Mitch for Indigenous Insights. In the studio today, we have Patrick LaPointe, field fisheries technician from the KBIC Natural Resources Department. Patrick, thank you very much for being here. Thanks for having me. All right, so for those that might not know who you are, tell us a little bit about yourself and what it is that you do. Um, so I grew up in Barriga. Um, I got into this field, I think, because I was always outside playing in creeks and just doing everything outside from dark to dark. Um, I enjoyed it as a kid and didn't think I would ever get into this field. I actually wanted to be a uh, veterinarian, but took a different route and now I'm in fisheries. And I enjoy it a lot. It's most of the day, it's, it doesn't even feel like work. Um, some labor, labor intensive stuff, but it's worth it. How long have you been in your position? I've been in my position for eight years. And what would you say? What is the give us the basic job description <clears throat> as a field fisheries technician? What what is the basics of what you do? Um, fisheries assessments. So we focus on three major species: lake whitefish, lake trout, and walleye. So we assess for those. Uh, native species in the home territory. Okay. So assessing and then if there's, you find discrepancies or things that are wrong, you take action and get things where they're supposed to be. Yep. Okay. Very, I mean, that kind of sounds a little bit like a veterinarian. I mean, it's kind of a similar field, wouldn't you say? Yeah. you just kind of outside. Just, yep. Animals and outdoors. Just, I love it. Yeah. So... Tell us a little bit about what's going on over there at NRD. There's always lots happening. Uh, what's the latest? Um, so we got a new fish processing facility and um, shared kitchen over on Brewery Road. So there's that. We have a subsistence gillnet tying workshop going on. That was held last week, and it's, it's a continuation of several workshops. Then... We have we just started field season last week or the week before um, for walleye, and pretty soon for lake trout. But walleye uh, spring spearing season kicked off, and it's been a long couple weeks. You know, I have to point out for you know for us living here on the reservation, some of those words are natural when it comes to natural resources, spearing, gill nets. But for natural resources off the reservation, uh, th those words might not be included all the time. There's a lot of culture worked into our natural resources department here as a tribal organization. Can you speak on that a little bit? Yeah, so... <clears throat> I guess my question is, from your superiors and your, you know, your supervisors, do they, does your department overall have a large prioritization for cultural things? I mean, is the culture and the natural resources kind of one yes. when it comes to your department? Yep, so... The commercial fishing aspect of my job, um, obviously, we've been gill netting for many, 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 many years. And um, now that it's commercialized, I have a job because of that. I keep track of uh, commercial fishermen. I monitor them, um, see what they're taking out of the system, how many of that species. And uh, that's all the bigger picture part of uh, managing for all species in Lake Superior, really. So um, the culture aspect of gill netting has gone commercial, and our members utilize that heavily. Some, it's their livelihood, and um, they hope to pass on that tradition. Unfortunately, there's a lot less younger people getting into it. Okay. So hopefully this gill net tying workshop gets people into subsistence fishing and that's really sustaining cool. Sustaining for their families. That's really cool because I guess what I was trying to do is see if there's a line between where your department is like, all right, we're natural resources, but we're also going to hold the priority of our cultural activities. But really, it doesn't seem to be a line. It's all one thing. You guys, it's just one goal. Um, where can people learn more about these workshops and what you have going on? They can visit our Facebook page or uh, the Natural Resources Department website. I think that's getting updated. Um, they can contact NRD, uh, Mike Lottie over there is good contact. I believe your guys' uh, content is getting on the KBIC newsletter as well. 
yeah, I think some of it is. And the uh, I think it's the Monday memos too. Some of the stuff goes on there. Very good. Are you uh, looking to uh, – this is something, a theme that pops up through all these interviews so far, and I'll ask everybody, are you guys currently looking to hire anybody new over there, new positions or anything? Yeah, there's always continuous like on-call positions. We're always looking for people. Um, some of our on-call positions are being filled right now uh, for Creel clerks. So we are trying to keep track on how many walleye are being taken out of certain systems. So we would have people stationed at lakes, at quota lakes, and they would count, measured way, take age structure off walleye, whatever uh, lakes people are interested in spearing. And that's going on right now up at Portage Lake, and it's been a pretty good turnout. We've had better years. Uh, the weather this past sto- this past storm has affected a lot, so made the waters murky and a little bit harder to get in there, but... Okay, and you might not know this, but do you know if the department is looking forward to getting some uh, KBIC youth, youth workers this summer? I believe so, yeah. They are always, especially like through the plants and um, Spear Watershed, I think, they have, I think, up to two dozen every summer working out there. Okay, what's the coolest part about your job? Um, dealing with fish that people don't realize are out there, like... One of my favorite parts is dealing with lake sturgeon. They're such a uh, dinosaur of a fish that I've handled little tiny sturgeon that are two to three inches long, all the way up to six feet. Six feet. What's the biggest? You me- what's the biggest? You got a measurement? Um, I don't remember that. Uh, six I've, feet plus. Yeah. Six feet plus, though, huh? Yeah, maybe around six feet. Probably seventy-five pounds, maybe. Wow. So on on the opposite end of that, what's the toughest part about your job? The probably trying to do the work in the weather. <laughs> I knew it. It's, I mean, I, I don't. I think we, anybody could have guessed that. <laughs> our our assessments are totally weather dependent, yep. and if it's rough out there, we won't go out there. I mean, and yeah, it's hard. That's why we have to be as flexible as possible. We work weekends, days, nights. It's Right now, we're, I mean, I've been working uh, 10 to 16 hour days for two weeks. <laughs> and that's just because the weather is good right now, or? Yeah, yeah. And just or the conditions are yep, right. Yeah, for the spring spearing season. And um, uh, someone's got to keep check on the fish. So tell me a little bit, just give me a quick overview of what you would do in a day. What do you do? If you weren't here, what would you be doing today? What are your tasks to. So, I enter commercial fishermen's catch data, and that gets submitted for monthly ports. It gets submitted to Glyphwick at the end of the year. Um, that's for a bigger picture model of the management of Lake Trout and Lake Superior. Um, we would be setting assessment nets in, in inland lakes, checking on populations. Um, uh, the big lake, we've set ass- uh, assessment gear for lake sturgeon out in the bay here. People have probably seen buoys at the head of the bay, and we're assessing for lake sturgeon down there. Um, in the summertime, we do summer lake trout assessments and early detection rapid response stuff. Um, if people seen buoys, little, or I guess big orange buoys out there in the lake, a bunch of them, that's what we're trying to do is – see if there's any aquatic invasive species out there, any new new ones that we could potentially get ahead of. So okay, we do that. So I really like what I'm hearing because, I mean, in you know, the term decolonization is about living in today's world the way we would have if there wasn't, you know, assimilation and all that kind of thing. From what I'm hearing from your department, that's exactly your guys' approach. You guys are using today's sciences and methods and techniques to really make sure our natural resources – resources are taken care of so we can do our cultural activities yep we try our best to manage the resource as best as we can and um that uh, assessing is a huge part of it and if we didn't do that we wouldn't have known certain things uh, we wouldn't know if the lake trout population is doing good and that that has to do with the quota and how many fish can be taken out and all right one last question here today then 
coming from the expert of the area. How is the how is the health of our fish out here in our bay? Is everything good? Yeah, it ebbs and flows. Um, sometimes uh, our fishermen will catch a bunch of fish. Sometimes they won't catch any fish. That I guess it depends on water temperature, uh, where they're fishing, and how their nets are and stuff like that. But I think it's pretty good. I, we've seen an increase in fishermen in the past few years, especially this year. It's pretty good. All right. That's all I have for you. Thank you very much for being here today. All right. Thank you.